The team is putting in a lot of effort in Sector 7 in 1985. A man in a submarine goes underwater to check on one of the drills. When it starts having issues and finds that it is stuck, he exits the submarine to fix it, dons his scuba gear, and looks out to see a large and magnificent sea creature swimming by. The ground begins to tremble, the sea floor begins to break, and some strange tiny glowing creatures start swimming about the man. He reaches out to touch one of them, but as soon as he does, the water pressure abruptly increases, propelling both the guy and the submarine higher. The little creatures start attacking the man as he clings to the drill and tries to use the radio to ask for assistance. At this point, everything goes black. Years go by, and we are now in 2011. Hey June directs the Sector 7 crew to lock the valves while she regulates the pressure because the riser is malfunctioning but she injures her shoulder in the process. The team carefully lowers the pipe while maintaining tight control of the valves. They walk away just in time to prevent a man from being struck in the head by this pipe and stop the riser from getting worse. The team talks about their failure to locate oil after that. There is a disagreement because they feel Hei Jun is too reckless and impetuous. Hei Jun vows she won't give up and that she will eventually locate oil. A teenage crewman gets reprimanded by a different employee and made to do absurd things after nearly dropping the pipe on his head earlier. A strange liquid emerges from the platform as the tiny child, who is terrified, grabs onto the pipe. Additionally, a tiny bright creature that the men are unfamiliar with is released by this liquid. Returning to Heijun, she is present in the clinic so that Dr. Moon Haing can examine her wound. Dong Su arrives to flirt with Heijun while teasing him for it and doesn't realize that she isn't interested. The rest of the group tries to capture many of those tiny marine animals, who are then placed in an aquarium for scientific research. The animals are from a chemosynthetic ecosystem that resides beneath ours, according to marine biologist Haiyan Young, who is baffled as to how they ended there in Sector 7. Kai soon goes inside the aquarium to retrieve one of the creatures, as she is preoccupied conversing with the others. However, the small animal promptly extends its tongue and strikes Kai soon in the face. Kai soon later appears with a sizable wound on his lips. Kai soon shuts the lift doors as Hyun Young enters and tries to give her a gift to declare his emotions for her, but she rejects him and forces him out. Later, Captain Huang makes the announcement that they have been given the go-ahead to evacuate the rig. The operation has been postponed because they are unable to locate oil. Hei Jun storms out of the room, insisting that they shouldn't give up so easy after becoming furious and claiming that they shouldn't. Dong Su pursues her and makes an effort to console her but he only makes matters worse. A helicopter lowers young man in Sector 7 a few hours later. He is Hei Jun's uncle and used to work here when he was younger. Because of his standing in the industry, Hei Jun greets him with a hug, and everyone else respects him greatly. To properly welcome him, they make a special feast, and all of a sudden, everyone is displaying their scars. Wang objects, claiming that scars are just indicators of negligence, but Hei Jun displays her own scar, and claims that their captain couldn't possibly comprehend the significance of scars. When Hei Jun later examines an old family portrait, it becomes clear that her dad was the one who perished in the water years earlier. When Yung Man comforts her, Hei Jun reminds him that she wants to keep looking for her father. In light of this, Young Man tells Huang that he would speak with the board to secure a few more months of employment. If they find oil, he'll let Huang take full credit. If not, he'll take the fall. The team imprints their handprints on the pipes the following day for good luck. After Young Man motivates them with a speech, the group labors assiduously for three months before they eventually find oil. Now that the major issue has been resolved, they may relax. Young Man enjoys shooting plates as a way to unwind and maintain his aim. Hei John and Dong Su are competing in a cycling race in the meantime. They zoom around the rig, while Hei Jun uses a stairway as a shortcut to make a large jump. Dong Su, however, manages to arrive first by making a big jump that amazes Hei Jun just as she is about to approach the finish line. When Dong Su tells her that she had to kiss him if he won, she is cheeky and only gives him a light peck on the cheek. Hei Jun and one of the crew members then put on their equipment and dive into the water to inspect the rig's support structure. When they inspect the pipe, they see that the metal has been damaged, so they start to fix it. The crewmate of Hei Jun is being held by a rope. When a weird presence starts creeping around up in the rig and hits the line, dragging him in. When the crew attempts to pull up after noticing this, the rope snaps, causing the man to plunge to the bottom of the sea and perish. The crew needs to pull Hei Jun out of the water using the other rope because at that very moment, one of his tools fails and knocks her unconscious. She finds the lifeless face of her friend amid the strange-looking jellyfish that suddenly surround her, but this vision is just a dream, and Hei Jun awakens in the hospital. Grief causes her to have a breakdown, and Yung Man consoles her before escorting her to her room to rest. 
They initially believe he is dead, but as they approach Kai soon awakens and begins to panic as he declares there is a monster in the building. Kai soon seizes the opportunity to flee as all of a sudden the rig begins to tremble. When the crew separates into two groups to pursue him, Hei John and Dong Su are startled to find a massive creature walking on the ceiling as they proceed down a hallway. Kai soon is trying to flee down another passage without being seen but the monster finds him and promptly murders him. Heijon and Dong Su arrive at the generator room shortly after and find the monster has built a nest there. The slain crew members' remains are scattered across the area, which is now completely covered in goo and has lost power. After that, the crew congregates in the communications room, where Heijun informs them that the creature is genuine. When their attempts to call for assistance are unsuccessful, Young Man gets his weapon and declares that he would fight back. In deciding to accompany him, Hei Jun, Dong Su, and Huang begin navigating the hallways in search of the monster. Instead, they discover two more crew members, and as a result of the commotion they make, the dreadful creature notices them and approaches them from behind. Although Hei Jun and Young Man want to shoot, they are unsure of their targets. When Young Man instructs the man to clear the clutter, the man misunderstands and starts clapping. The crew member is then grabbed by the creature's lengthy tongue which it uses to start throwing him around and pounding him against objects like walls and furniture. The two crewmen were able to escape because Hei Jun and Yun Man took advantage of the opportunity and moved in closer to shoot at the monster. Despite appearing to be unconscious for a few seconds, the monster is actually just recovering from its gunshot wounds and is soon ready to strike once more. Then Yun Man pulls out a lighter, lights it, and hurls it at the monster, who instantly catches fire. It becomes enraged and starts pursuing the crew. As they flee, they try to seal a door behind them, but the monster simply pushes it down. As the group enters the lift, the monster slams against the door, but is unable to shatter it. Nevertheless, it locates the window and smashes it to allow its long tongue to get through. Every attack is avoided by the crew, and when Hei Jun spots a chance, she uses an axe to chop the tongue down. After that, the team attends to their wounds in the lab, while Captain Huang becomes suspicious of Yung Man, claiming that he volunteered to return to this terrible situation, and that he was aware of the need to use fire to combat the thing. In response, Yung Man smashes one of the aquarium boxes, and sets one of the little animals on fire, claiming that this will sustain the flame for 24 hours. Then he tells the entire tale. When Hei Jun's father first discovered the critters, the science team realized right away that the liquid they generate, which resembles a seed, might be used as a much better oil. However, since they would be consuming live creatures, there was an ethical objection. The group began to breed and experiment with these animals, and one of them eventually developed into the enormous monster they had previously encountered. While conducting her investigation, Han Young learned the truth, and when she threatened to tell the others, Young Man killed her, back in the present. A furious Hei Jun feels deceived by her own uncle, but Young Man asserts that he has returned to atone for his transgressions. The creature suddenly appears at the window, which it swiftly breaks to enter an assault, and they start hearing noises. Despite being imprisoned, Young Man orders Hei Jun to leave him and flee as the team starts to flee. The monster quickly hisses in pain, dumps Yung Man, and flees the room as Yung Man struggles to hold onto a bottle of scorching medicine, while being buffeted by the monster's sticky tongue. Hei Jun offers to go to the generator room to restore power, while the crew searches for their weapons. Dong Su follows her and watches in awe as Hei Jun bravely reaches into the sludge and pulls the lever to restore electricity. Wang and the two young men are walking down a hallway when they are surprised to discover the monster beneath them. They attempt to restrain him, but the beast is too strong and pierces the floor to launch an attack. The creature starts pursuing the men after the men unsuccessfully attempt to shoot it. One of the young men slips as they run, and his comrade returns to assist him. However, Huang continues running and enters another room, locking the door without listening to the cries of his terrified men. The monster pulls the two buddies apart with his tongue, while they struggle to stay together, killing them both mercilessly one at a time. When Hei Jun and Dong Su return, they are shocked to find no one in sight. It turns out that Huang stole the submarine by himself and is attempting to swim under the surface to safety. However, he only manages to make it a short distance before one of his crewmates body smashes the window and the beast emerges out of nowhere on top of the submarine, shattering all the glass and allowing water to flood the vehicle, killing Wang. Young Man starts the building's self-destruction procedure when he returns to the rig, then he steps outside to fire a flare. Only the captain has the authority to halt it despite the efforts of Heijun and Dong Su. When the monster returns at that point, Yung Man is ready with a flamethrower, but it has minimal effect and barely slightly burns the monster. After trading blows and getting knocked around, Yung Man then starts fighting the monster with a pipe. He eventually stabs the beast and uses the metal as a trap. Now that Yung Man is able to use the lighter once more to build a more effective fire, the beast is burning quickly. The strange liquid, however, smothered Yung Man throughout the battle 
and he perished in the flames, Dong Su had to shove Hei Jun out of the way as the creature starts to tremble in agony and look for water. Unfortunately, the monster seizes the opportunity to snag Dong Su as well, and when it jumps into the ocean with Young Man's body, it also carries Dong Su with it. Hei Jun, who is devastated, collapses to her knees and hears something. It appears that Dong Su was able to save himself by grabbing onto a rope. Hei Jun grabs her bike right away and starts pulling on a rope with it. The monster attempts to attack by leaping out of the water but Hei Jun quickly raises Dong Su. Suddenly, the bike slips causing Hei Jun to fall and injure her shoulder. Fortunately, Dong Su is able to climb the rest of the way up. Hei Jun is relieved to meet Dong Su again, with only one minute left to commit suicide, but the moment is marred when the monster returns. Dong Su tries to get free by grabbing it by the mouth in an effort to give Hei Jun a chance to do so. Dong Su is thrown into the air by the monster, who continues to pursue him before quickly biting him to death. However, the thing rapidly starts rising back out of the water. So Hei Jun hops on her bike and rides close to the creature in an attempt to attract its attention. She fires it with a gun to delay it by positioning it close to the edge. She then drives off to make a tremendous jump and turns around to go under a small pathway. Hei Jun makes another rapid move and throws the bike at the beast, setting off a massive explosion when it tries to follow her and becomes stuck in the building. Unfortunately, after being completely scorched, the monster is still alive. Running to the drilling site, Hei Jun hides in the cabin and carefully pushes a button to remotely open a door. Hei Jun closes the door after the monster enters the adjacent room believing someone is present, believing she has successfully locked the door. The creature nevertheless manages to escape and return through the roof when it starts pursuing Hei Jun through the pipes. Hei Jun reaches for a wrench and starts to beat the creature, but he is quickly forced up against the machinery. Hei Jun then locates some rope and allows the crane to hoist her up. Hei Jun hops onto a pipe and causes the monster to tumble directly into the drilling spot as the monster starts to climb up as well. She also stumbles, breaking her leg but at least she avoids the pipe in time. Hei Jun then runs to seize the remote control, while remaining motionless to entice the monster. When it is sufficiently close, she presses the button, causing the drill to descend and capture the monster. Although its limbs are still loose, they manage to seize Hei Jun's leg and knock her to the ground. Hei Jun drags her body across the floor while battling the hold, until she reaches the drill control and turns it on starting the drill to slash through the monster's body and killing it. The rig then starts to self-destruct. Hei Jun doesn't allow the several explosions frighten her. Instead, she mounts her bike and leaps from the structure to a nearby platform, where she launches another flare. Soon after, she is saved by a helicopter. A few years later, an older Hei Jun returns to Sector 7 and examines the underwater pipes. When she sees all the uplifting comments her old crew had scrawled on them prior to the disaster, she breaks down in tears. 